What's happening guys and gals? Thanks for stopping in to check out Mom and Papa Joe's. Today we're going to be working on the IBCA competition meats. We're going to be prepping brisket, ribs, and chicken. Brisket is the king of all meats in Texas, uh, actually across the nation. So that's the one we're going to be prepping first. If you haven't yet subscribed to our channel, please go ahead and do so. Uh, you're going to really enjoy the content that you're going to be receiving. Much more to come. Without further ado, let's get started. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be trimming an American Wagyu. Clocked in right around 16 pounds. You know, every time we go to purchase a brisket, we're never sure what we have until we pull it out of that package. It might look great in the stores, but we're never certain until we pull it out of that package. Some of the things I look for uh, in the store before I select the brisket. Uh, you want to check for marbling as best as you can in uh, the turning area. For me, that's about right in here. So if you can see some marbling, uh, that's a great indication that it's a solid brisket. Other places I look for marbling uh, is in the flat end. If you can see some marbling on the cut end of the flat, uh, it, it indicates that your brisket has some marbling further down into the flat. Uh, I hope to never have to come down here uh, to grab slices. But uh, things have happened and sometimes you have to do what you have to do. Other things I look for is symmetry. I want a nice wide brisket. That way I'm able to uh, trim it to uh, my specifications. And that is where my consistency comes from. I trim my brisket. Uh, to fit a certain container from end to end and from side to side. This allows me to cook almost the same weight brisket every single competition. The only time my brisket changes weight at a competition is based on thickness, which is something we can't control. But we'll see that uh, towards the end of this video. As I look at this brisket, I notice that I've got a nice overhang here, not something that I want. I'm going to be sure to cut that off simply because uh, without any support underneath, this tends to want to dry, crack, and uh, shred, especially when it comes to slices. But this brisket is wide enough, I'll be able to cut that off, uh, remove that. First thing I want to do is to remove uh, silver skin and fat. I love my slicing knife. It's not a uh, traditional knife for trimming, but I've gotten so used to it that I, I can't do without it. Whenever I'm trimming off this silver skin and fat, I want to ensure that my blade is pointed upwards. I'm going to place my hands underneath the area that I'm cutting. I'm not going to worry too much about this thin end, uh, especially the areas that I'm going to be cutting off as I trim this brisket. Another tip, great tip, get your brisket as cold as possible when it comes time for trimming. It wouldn't even hurt you to place your brisket into the freezer for a couple of uh, 20 minutes to a half an hour to really chill it down. It makes slicing so much easier. I always slice with the grain. I find that it's easier. You try not to create any divots, any place, trenches, divots, places where water can pool during the cook. Those areas will have bark that never sets. So you just got to be very careful. Most brisket, you'll run across a fat seam similar to this one. You do not want to go chasing that fat seam. Simply get what you can and be satisfied. That is to prevent you from creating a trench that I spoke of. 
All briskets usually come with this fat pad. Hard fat. I don't care, you could cook this 80 hours. It will never render. It's one of the first things I want to get rid of after I've gotten my silver skin and fat removed. I want to line my knife so that my knife is level with my meat. And I'm just going to simply remove. A little more silver skin and fat. All right, I like what I've got right there. Let's work quickly work on the back side. There you can see a better picture of that overhang uh, that I spoke of earlier. One of the first things I'm going to do on the back side is to try to get this as even, as close to even as possible from end to end. I'm going to expose a lot of point. These uh, trimmings. I'm not afraid to really expose uh, this point meat. Because of all the fat in here, it is not going to be a problem in terms of drying out or burning. How you trim, there's no right or wrong way. How you trim ultimately depends on what you want your slices to look like in that box at the end of the uh, competition, at turning. All right, much more even now. Our overhang is almost touching, even though we're gonna get rid of it. At this point, I'm gonna be looking at starting to shape this brisket into my final cut. So I wanna look at how the grain is running. And I wanna sort of trim this brisket so that I end up turning the grain just slightly. Uh, this, this, uh, this is almost 75% against the length of this brisket, so uh, it's not too bad. But I wanna trim this to something looking like this, and then block it off that way. It's, I call it visually turning the grain. Uh, sort of an, an illusion but it works for me. The biggest tip I can give you here is to remove pieces slowly. You can always uh, remove more, but you cannot put back. So start very uh, small with the, with the pieces you're cutting off until you've reached to where you wanna reach. We spoke earlier about this thin side, this overhang. That's gonna be the first that I want to remove. Each time I start slicing the side of this, this brisket, I'm gonna turn my blade so that my blade is angled outwards. Outwards, angled towards the piece that I'm removing. This simply allows me to be able to round this brisket off in the end in a much more efficient manner. You'll see shortly. Blade turn outwards. And once again, I'm trying to cut uh, along with the grain as best as possible. Blade turn outwards to where I am removing.
I can immediately go up here to lessen what I have to work with. You've got to be very careful uh, as you're cutting. You don't want to press onto the brisket as you're cutting because it distorts the bottom and you end up with some uh, uneven cuts. So it uh, requires a very sharp knife and a uh, little pressure in the areas that you're cutting. I mentioned earlier, ultimately how you trim uh, will depend on what you want your slices to look like in the box. Some people uh, turning flat only, not a problem. I like turning in both flat and point. I like the idea of being able to give those judges their choice. All right, our shape is coming along nicely. Gonna flip back over. There was a gouge here from uh, from processing. Not a problem. I will actually take a piece of this fat that I am trimming. And I like to place it on there for during the cook. Especially when that gouge is in the, uh, in the flat area. I want to have about a quarter inch. Of fat on my flat end. Now I'm just going to continue rounding. We don't want any 45 or 90 degree angles on this brisket. Uh, it's all about aerodynamics. We want that smooth uh, flow of air, smoke, across this brisket. Areas that come to a hard point, 45, 90 degree, etc., uh, want to crisp up and burn and dry out during the cook. That is why we round, we round off everything. Plus, to me, it looks uh, it looks so much prettier. Now, based on where you take your slices uh, at a competition. I'm going to flip this brisket uh, around so you can see this side because I want my slices at a competition coming from coming from right here. I want to take both point and flat. Let me do a little cleanup. Some good sharp kitchen shears are a necessity uh, when it comes to trimming all your meats. So this is what I'm talking about. I want to take my slices. I want to turn in both uh, point and flat. So I want my slices coming from in here. And in order to get this so that both flat and point are lined up, I found over time my, my trim has uh, my trim has evolved over time to where to where I trim the flat a little thinner than I do the point. This exposed point, this point that's 
that's that's sticking out from from uh, under the flat will actually shrink during the cook and line up with this flat. This point will shrink and line up with this flat. And that way I can get nice even slices. If I was to trim right now this point in alignment with this flat, this point would shrink further and end up way here, way over here, uh, leaving this flat hanging over with no support. I'm sure some of you uh, have probably experienced that uh, over, over the course of uh, many brisket cooks. So I trim uh, leaving some point uh, extended beyond the flat in this manner. So here we are. And our, our grain has, uh, has turned just slightly. Guys and gals, I am not one of those that feel I have to cut 100% across the grain. It distorts my slices in length, so I don't do it. Uh, I get this brisket, I cook this brisket to the point where it's tender enough that I'm able to cut across the grain. I would say about 80%, 85% as opposed to 100% uh, the way some of uh, many people do uh, starting off from that corner. And the mark that I usually make uh, when I trim off this side, the end of this flat, uh, is the mark that, that tells me uh, where and how to start my slices. Again, my blade is going to be out to the point that I'm cutting. And again, very happy with this brisket. Lots of good uh, fat in the flat end. Come back. And again, start fit rounding. So after a little last uh, second nipping and tucking, uh, this is my finished uh, product and I want you to see remember I spoke earlier about that point that I've got exposed from the flat so from the flat one end to the next is about seven and a half seven and a quarter to seven and a half come back down here right at seven and a half so what I'm expecting if I went all across to the full, uh, point to the other side, we're looking at about eight and a quarter. So I'm expecting this to shrink and line up right here. It usually works 99% uh, uh, of the time. So I, I, I have no doubt uh, that it's, it's going to work just the same. And once again, I'll be getting my slices from right in here, my nine slices. I'm not worried about here. I'm not worried about here. Uh, this is money right here. So this is what uh, my finished product looks like. And I spoke earlier about, uh, about how I use the same container time and time again to ensure that I have uh, just about as close to the same size brisket uh, I possibly can. Without picking up my little shims I have underneath there. Uh, oh, they came up. All right, iron out any fingerprints you might have put in. All right, this is what I'm looking at. So once again, uh, end to end, side to side, with, the, with give or take about a half an inch to an inch of space on, on each side. But this is how I'm able to take the same brisket, approximately the same brisket to every cook-off. And for that reason, folks, my consistency, my cook times rarely vary more than 15 minutes before or 15 uh, minutes after uh, my, uh, my total cook time. So I'm very consistent in that manner. Rarely do I have a brisket go longer than 15 minutes over my, uh, my cook time. That's what consistency is all about, doing the same thing consistently. Guys and gals, that was Mom and Papa Joe's brisket trim. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And as usual, if you haven't yet hit that subscribe button, Please do so. It's right there. 
Be on the lookout for ribs and chicken the following the next couple of days. And once again, thanks for watching. Take care.